This is Radio Sabah calling from Jesovan, North Borneo. Askadas and I'm proud to be part of the largest ethnic indigenous group in Sabah, Malaysia or Borneo. It is my moral obligation to share with you the history and the origin and the legacy of our people so that our new generation can understand that our identity is known by God, given by God. We thank God for this time and season. Hear our story. You may Good begin. Afternoon. Good afternoon. Here in Thailand, it's uh, eleven in the morning. <laughs> yeah. I see. I see. Just know that. <laughs> so you're compensated for us. <laughs> yes, we are. We are behind. I mean, we are one hour behind you. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, let me thank you for agreeing to doing this interview with us. Okay. So okay. the honor is ours. Amen. Amen. In Thailand, it says Sawadikrap. Sawadika. Sawadika. <laughs> Sawadika. Mm, Sawadika. So, All right. how are you today? I, I, I'm fine. I'm fine. I just completed some of the videos and uh, I went through some of the Kadazan Dusun documentary, which I, I think that uh, I want to do it in English instead of just uh, Bahasa Malaysia or Kadazan since more and more students love to to do this documentary hang on somebody just ring to me just hang on yeah just hang on for okay. me. right all right mm. so before we start yeah do you want to do a self-introduction or I want to know who are you all right simple sweet and easy uh, I am a Christian University College professor in uh, two institutions. 
means to say I'm teaching mostly uh, theology and divinity subjects to diplomas, bachelor, master, and doctorate student in our college and university. So currently I am based in Thailand. I'm happily married to a Thai wife with a daughter. I've been staying here for decades. But originally I came from the island of Borneo, the third largest island in the world, a state called Sabah, the neighborhood of Sarawak, Brunei, and Kalimantan. So I am a Malaysian. <laughs> I was born in the state of Sabah. But then um, I'm 56 years old now. I'm retired. I am already in a base state in Thailand uh, for more than almost more than 10 years more than 10 years so um, I'm doing an online lecture for most of the students because of the pandemics and um, the situation in, in Thailand doesn't allow us to travel we are still under darurat we are still under darurat state of emergency that does not allow us to travel I'm supposed normally Every year I travel to many parts of Asia, Europe, and Africa because we have our offices there. But uh, yeah, by the will of the Lord, maybe next year I will travel. So I'm mostly doing mostly doing online lecture, like what I'm doing to you guys. I'm also doing the same, uh, running an off-campus online uh, theological and divinity uh, subjects but at the meantime i'm also a historian that means um, mostly i studied about the history of malaysia the history of many countries and so on and and since i am a kadazan i am a mixed kadazan by the way uh, my great great grandfather is a pure chinese wong you know that means wong fei hong is my cousin from guangdong from Guangdong, I'm a Hokkien by the way. I, I'm a, uh, my great grandfather is a Hokkien, but I don't speak Hokkien, but I love Hokkien me. <laughs> <laughs> but right. I'm I, I'm an English educated, and uh, I didn't go to Chinese schools or so sorry, so that I don't speak really uh, Mandarin ni hao ma, hao liang, uh, that's all. <laughs> but um, I'm a historian. I studied a lot and culture, tourism, especially Borneo, the Kadazan Dusun is one of my favorite history subjects. So you came to the right person when, whenever you ask me about it. I produce a lot of uh, documentaries on the YouTube. Yes, but I, seen. I have not seen any subscribers yet. Somebody promised to subscribe, but I did not see any subscribers yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've subscribed, definitely. I'm so subscribed. Okay, please do. Please do because otherwise I will charge you for my lecture fee for two hours, eh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> joking, joking, joking. Okay, that's a little bit of my introduction and uh, I'm a historian by the way, so uh, anything to do yeah, with... find the right people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all. Right. A little bit about my introduction. Yeah, go so, ahead. So, from what I've heard, you must be multilingual. Uh, I sing sp Spanish. Uh, I speak Bahasa Indonesia very fluently. Saya berbahasa Indonesia begitu lancar sekali. I speak uh, Baku, Bagus. Bahasa Melayu Baku. Uh, kalau kalau bercakap Bahasa Malaysia boleh juga, boleh juga. And I can speak. I speak Kadazan. I speak Rungus. I speak English. I speak a little bit of Thai. Yeah. Oh wow. What, what can wow. you say? What can you say? You've been in every part of the world. Yeah. Sure. Sure. So just because of the pandemic, I could not uh, travel. Every year, I travel to, to to speak in many part of Europe. Belgium is my second home. Uh, I, whenever I'm uh, invited to give motivational talk, I talk in Paris, in Amsterdam, in Belgium, in South Africa, and mostly in Thailand. So this is a Malaysian traveler. Traveler. <laughs> oh, okay. In, enough of too much, I, I think I give too much profile, so you introduce yourself, yes. yeah. Mm. So we are from our college. Tunku Abdul Rahman University yeah. College. Correct. I, my wife and, wanted the camera. <laughs> it's fine. Anyway, um, you just say hello. 
If you want to say hello to my wife, Dr. Jamie. Hello, everyone. Hi, Hi how are you? This, oh, student. Hi. Yeah, these <laughs> are diploma student from uh, Taruk, Taruk. Yes. Tuku Abdul Rahman University College in Kuala Lumpur. Yes, that's yeah. very good. I, I think was found by Dr. Lim Leong Sik or something. Mm-hmm. He's the founder, right? Mm-hmm. Of Taruk. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Even you don't know who's your founder, eh? Yeah. Okay, that's all about it. Like, that is very talk. good. I just encourage you something that just keep continue to looking forward and earn your knowledge. Ball. I'm Dr. Jamie. Dr. Jamie, yeah. Yes, nice to meet you all. Bye. Nice to meet you too. Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So this interview is about mm-hmm. uh, assignment where we look into the ethnicity, different ethnicity of minorities okay. in Malaysia. Okay. Yeah. And we we search Kadaza and we find it really interesting actually. <laughs> it's the biggest tribe. Correct. Yep. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I would believe there is a lot to discover. Oh, about yeah, their cultures sure. and their language. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Right. First of all, so, first of all, do you speak Kadazan? Ah uh, no. <laughs> okay, I teach you one word. Whenever they say greeting, all right? Ni hao ma, ni hao, ni hao in Kadazan is kopi vosian. Kopi vosian. Kopi, you know kopi, coffee, coffee, nah. No? Kopi vosian. Kopi vosian. Yeah, like. Like. Like photocopy, right? Photocopy, right? C O P Y, right? Copy, vo, sian. Copy, vo, sian. Mean, ni hao ma, ni hao ma. That that. Copy, vo, sian to you. Yeah, copy, vo, sian to you. Okay, go ahead. Mm. All right. So, <clears throat> can we move into questions? Oh sure, sure. Right. I, I didn't know. Who, you should introduce yourself first, eh? <laughs> yeah. So sorry. <laughs> My name is Ko Kai Kit. Okay, Ko Kai Kit. Okay. You can call me Ko. Okay. Ko. Okay. Right. Right. Mm. Can I let my classmates introduce themselves? Yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. My name is Wong Wei Yu. Okay, Miss Wei. You can call me Wong. Wong. Wei Yu. Wei Yu. So Wong Wei Yu. Yeah. Oh, Miss Wong. So you are my distant cousin, eh? Wong, eh? <laughs> wow. Because my great grandfather name is Wong Alung. That's my great grandfather, Wong. You know. <laughs> okay, okay. Miss Wong. Yeah. Okay. Thank nice. You. All right. Mm-hmm. My name is Ang Ming Tian. Ang Ming Tian. You can call me Tian. 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 Oh, the one who who sent my audio the other day. Yes. Eh? Okay, Miss Tian. Okay. 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 Yeah. My name is Chong Bi Wei. Hi, Miss Chong. Okay. Yeah, hi. <laughs> yeah, okay, Miss Chong. Mm-hmm. My name is Yong Sun Yi. You can call me Yong. Yong, Yong, Yong. Yeah. But, but I see in the Google say Cindy. Cindy. You wrote it down <laughs> Cindy, eh? <laughs> okay, Cindy Yong. Okay, right. Okay. Mm-hmm. My name is Liu Yu. Okay, Miss Liu. You can call me Liu. Okay, Miss Liu. Okay, okay. All right. Okay, Mr. Ku. Yes, go ahead. All right. So we have done a little background search, and we found out that you are from a tribe called Tanga. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Right. So I believe is it is it true that every tribe has their own specialty food and their own cultures? Okay, that's your question, eh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, definitely, it's true. Um, from the previous students uh, before you, uh, similarly, they were asking about it, and I said that in Sabah, there are over forty, uh, close to forty tribes, or they call it sub-ethnic, because the biggest ethnic. Is the ethnic of Kadazan? You see, the so it's like sub-ethnic where it consists of over close to forty ethnic. So if you go to the north, a different tribe it will be the Rungus, and then mm. you go to the east or west it will be the Kadazan, it will be the Tanga, and then in in, in a mountain there will be a, 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 a 
Muruts and the Dusuns and you go to the Keningau to Tambunan you will see another tribe called Kuijau and you go to Tenom famous Tenom coffee in Sabah is Tenom coffee it will be the Muruts and Muruts also have few more sub tribals so um, uh, I think when you talk about food all right everybody eat rice that that is that is essential you see but the tribe in the hill part will plan a, a hill type of rice which is different than the, the the plain riverside type of rice okay but they still eat rice anyway they hunt they fish they eat fish food but the recipe the way they cook their food that what makes every tribe unique and different all right is and the same thing with the way they live some are living in the hill hilly part so in the olden days some 50 60 years ago they stay in house even in the in the tree house and then uh, the rumus love a colony they stay in a long house the muruts also love colony they, they like to stay together so they stay in a long house but those who are in the plain near the riverside near the what they call near the seaside uh, especially the tanga tribes and some to some extent the mixed chinese intermarriage because Sabah has been become one of the famous adventurous place to come with you know the British the Spaniard the even American went there and then the Chinese a lot a lot of Chinese came to Sabah and so they get intermarried with the Chinese and so like me I'm a mixed Chinese and so the lifestyle is influenced by either the father's side or the mother's side if it's a chinese father and the mother is a kadazan then of course uh, uh, the dna the dna of the chinese is much more stronger so the father tend to give the name wong or li or, or whoever uh, were married to the father and they begin to follow the culture right but they have their food unique kind of food they have their unique kind of culture they have their unique kind of uh, dress and they have their unique kind of relationship this is very interesting because I did not tell the other student about the marriage custom of a Murut and the marriage custom of Kadazan is very different it's not the same all right so does it answer your question Yes, but more than one of my questions. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That's really good. Uh, so, do you have like I would imagine you have names for your food? Oh yes, we have name for food. Uh, what, um, what kind of food do you want? Something like a hard food or soft food or? <laughs> Maybe you can list out the ones that which is your okay. favorite. Okay, my favorite food. When you talk about this. Surprisingly, yeah. my favorite food is rice. <laughs> rice. Okay, but we also have this kind of food, uh, like a flaw from a rumbia tree. If you know a rumbia, rumbia tree. Rumbia tree. Rumbia okay. tree is kind of a palm tree, kind of a palm tree. You know, similar to a palm tree. Mm -hmm. A lot in Sabah, but we call it rumbia rumbia so we okay. cut it we open it like you are opening a sugar cane you know it's okay. like, and inside there is a, a juice in it we just uh. squeeze the juice and come out the sticky kind of uh, floor you know okay and then that one we will just put it under the sun and it become a bit harder and it, it's like a food it's like a rice so during the Japanese occupation in Sabah World War II okay I don't know if you are born 
I was not born here. The Japanese came to Sabah. They occupied even the Malaya, right? So most of the people of Sabah cannot stay in the in the house, so they move to the mountain uh, or they hide somewhere, so they cannot eat rice. So what they did is they use this because this has been traditionally handed down by our ancestors. So we eat this kind of flour from the rumbia, from the rumbia, a juice. Okay, it's quite sticky when you cook it. The taste is like a food, edible food, and we eat it as an alternative of rice. Okay, so we call it, if you want to know the name, we call it nantung. 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 It's a sticky kind of like flowery, sticky kind of uh, juice that is, that, that, is alternate food apart from rice okay apart from uh, rice okay so it's a it's kind of a flour rice from a tree yeah but it's not rice anyway it is from the juice it's like you know a mango juice you squeeze like the orange juice you squeeze it and and then you dry it you dry it and it produce kind of a flour like a flour you know uh, flour tepung tepung you know uh, tepung yes and yeah. and we eat you know like roti canai kind of things you eat like roti chapati oh. kind of things right it's similar you can make the flow of the rumbia tree to become like a roti chanai or roti chapati i see then the indian will eat the thing right they don't eat rice they eat roti right yeah yeah. i remember i stayed one month in pakistan and they serve me all the roti chapati roti chanai every day for one month in pakistan <laughs> I see. they don't eat rice they don't eat rice in pakistan they don't eat rice they eat the roti so oh, the roti is made from flour. Yes, the same thing with the rumbia. Rumbia it become like a flour, and then they will eat it. But then, after the independent and so on, we still plant rice and with rice. Another another kind of food is okay. When you talk about this, I like this kind of um, a fish, a fish called tilapia. Tilapia. Ikan keruk. Ikan keruk. Yeah. I don't know how to call it. Ikan keruk. You know. And then we cook it with salty type, salty taste, and uh, masam. You know, <laughs> we use a lot of okay. lemon. Uh, we can just write down the name of the ingredients. Okay. We we use lemon. We use a kind of very sour kind of uh, fruit. You know, called takobako. 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 T a k o b. We use, okay. we, it's like a, a wild mango, but it's very sour, mixed with, um, mixed with kunyit, you know? Uh, uh, kunyit, yeah. Kunyit. Yellow powder. Yeah, yellow powder and, and tamarind, you know, tamarind and all that. Yeah. And then we cook with a bit salty. So it's salty and sour. The Kadazan mm. love salty and sour. They just love to eat salty and sour kind of kind of cook. So the tilapia or ikan basung they call it whatever fish they will just cook using that lemongrass and kunyit and and so it becomes like a paste for every dish. Yeah. So cook it. yeah, they they love like I said the taste must be salty and sour. <laughs> they love that. They they just love it. They just love. It. Another one is called hinava. 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 H I N A V A. Well then we'll just get that down. H Hinava. H I N A V A. Okay. Hinava is a kind of a half cooked uh, fish meat. Half cooked. And they just half cooked. Yeah, and they just chop 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 it Dijan. in. Yes. Put some lemon in it. A little bit of sugar, um, good enough salt, and uh, ginger, and then they, they 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 just mix it up. They just mix it up. It's like a half cook, like a sushi style, you know, like a half cook kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And still, not fully cooked. Yeah, salty, sour, and they call it hinava. It hinava. is an essential kind of dish that the Kadazan people and even the Dusun. 
You see? Dusun Kadazan and even the Murut love to eat that, but it belongs to the Kadazan people. They call it Hinava. So when you go to Saba, you just say, Can I try some Hinava? You know? And they will serve you. Oh, it, it, the household will have it. Yeah. And then sometimes they don't even cook at all. Like exactly like a Japanese salmon, you know, when you go to sushi, it's, it's raw. Really raw. <laughs> Yeah. They just chop, 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 and they use a lemon to cook it. Like the juice of the lemon will cook the the meat, you know, something like this. But some do eat it half half cooked, you know. They just chop, 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 and you eat it. it it's, it's so nice because we we love we love sour kind of thing. You like the strong flavor. Yes, strong flavor, strong flavor. So, so you it is also salt, salty and sour. Salty and sour. And number three, I just want to introduce number three, the, the, the most favorite uh, uh, dish of the Kadazans is um, dry fish, dry salty fish, dry salty fish. Um, this is being introduced by the uh, fishermen, the Bajau people who stay by the seaside and they catch the fish and they put it inside, put salt in it soak in the salt for one week fermented with fermented salt. with salt for one week and they hang it under the sun and the smelly is the smelly of a dead fish for one week but because of the the salt it it become like it, it does is not destroyed it's just fermented salt and uh, it is very very uh, good at so least ikan masin. Ikan, yes, ikan masin. Exactly ikan masin. But in in Kadazan we call it ko koitem. K o k o i t a n. Ko k o i t a n. K o k o i t o n. Koitem. Ko koitem. Okay. So ko koitem is actually a salty dry kind of a fish being put on top of it the uh, tamarind yellow tamarind so and you guys fry it or sorry do you fry it okay or you just dry there are two types to do we fry all right or we put in a coals you know it's like Oh, okay. like so just cook it. Grill, grill it. You know, grill, grill. Ah. It. You grill it under the fire. You grill the fish, or you fry it slowly. Yeah, or you fry it, and oh. then once you fry it or grill it, then you put a little bit of lemon on top of it. Oh, voila! Ooh. So that is just oh, that is just delicious food. So we call it ko koiton. K o k o i t o n. Alright. So okay. if you go to Sabah, you just say, "Mam, inai." Or we call, inai mean mam, mam. Inai, I want the kokoiton. Do you have a kokoiton for me? Oh, they they will serve you. Or hinava for uh, me. Uh, how do you say delicious in? Um. Okay, delicious is uh, O P O T O. Okay. P O T O. O P for para and then we have O for orange and then we have T for Thailand and we have O for orange. So pronounce it. How do you pronounce it? O po <laughs> Okay. O for orange, P for para, O for orange, T for Thailand and O for orange. Upoto. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> Opoto. <laughs> Inama Opoto. Opoto, yes. Opoto. Opoto. Mm, Opoto. Delicious. <laughs> well, that's a lot of food and, and in a single track. And Thailand say, Thailand say, Aroi Ma. Aroi. Aroi Jing Jing Kap. Aroi Jing Jing Kap. <laughs> I know a bit. <laughs> Opoto, Opoto. 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 Mm. Okay. Alright, so... That's a lot. That's a lot of information and food that we cannot find online, actually. <laughs> That's a lot. Okay. Okay. So right now, can we move into 
Ya, yeah, what about the rest? The rest are not asking anything. <laughs> oh yeah, so actually all the questions I give it to me. you. You are the leader. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. I'm the interviewer for today. All right, go ahead. Because the previous yeah. student, the previous six uh-huh. of them, right? Every one of them will ask me a question. So, <laughs> so, so now only you. Okay, that that's good. That's good. Go ahead. Mm. Uh, we like to move into festivals. All right. Okay. Right. So we couldn't find much about Kadazan festival. Like, what do you celebrate? Okay. And all that. Okay. So could you s- okay. speak a little bit about that? Okay. The biggest. The biggest and the most popular festival of the Kadazan, which combine all the forty tribes, you can imagine all the forty tribes, all over, will celebrate a once a year, once a year, in the month of May, bulan lima, you know? In the month of May, they call the festival as. Harvest festival. Harvest festival. Harvest festival in Bahasa Malaysia is pesta menuai, menuai. It is considered a statewide harvest festival in the month of May, and in the state of Sabah, it is declared a public holiday on 30th and 31st of May. It's a public holidays by the government to celebrate the harvest festival, okay? Or pesta menuai, menuai. okay? Harvest mean you know if you have a rice or padi, right? You want to harvest the rice, yeah? Correct. Yeah. Or if you have uh, orchid or, or orange or mango, you want to harvest the mango. You want to harvest the orange, so you know harvesting is a time where the Kadazans and the Dusuns and the Rumus plant rice, and then they wait for six months. Normally, they pl- start to plant rice in the month of January, okay, February, and when it reach uh, May, month of May. The, the the rice is ready to be harvest menuai padi you know so they harvest the thing and then once they have harvested it is like a new rice to them they will celebrate like praying to the to the people who are not christian they praying to the god thanking god for the bountiful harvest that they have harvest that year so they celebrate the big oh yes gratefulness they thank the god who gave them a bountiful blessing of harvest of rice and they celebrate it big at kampung level and then district level and finally the state level you know they celebrate very big including um, even the all prat- the tribes combined all the tribes combined all right it's a common festival for everyone to get together every year every year in the month of may and the tribe have formed an association association they call it kadazan dusun cultural association This organization is being given the responsibility to organize this annual event. So the government of Sabah is allocating a special fund like a million, you know, a million fund, a million, you know, million for, the, for the for, festival. Yes, for, for two days. days. For two days, yeah. Wow. <laughs> So it's a very big event and the association is the one who is in charge to do so many 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 kind of activities which is cultural activities all right so uh, uh, even the even the prime minister come 
Normally, they never miss. The Prime Minister of Malaysia must come because it's a big event. It's a very big festival wow. in the month of May. Trust me, I hope that the pandemic is gone and next year you go to Sabah on the 30th or 31st for the Harvest Festival. You will see thousands of people come to the building. They have an association building, very big cultural association building and thousands will flock there from overseas, from many, many, because that's a time um, where all the 40 tribes, you can meet one by one, all the 40 tribes, you can see the dress, the culture, their dance, their gong, and they celebrate have... Celebrate the history. Celebrate the Harvest Festival with many, many activities like games, you know, all the, the traditional games, and the highlight of it all is of course like a, a, a queen beauty queen contest the most beautiful pigeon. Uh, pigeon the most beautiful queen among the 40 tribe so they choose so there's a singing competition uh, singing local languages you can sing in murut you can sing in rungus you can sing in kadazan dusun and they they, they choose a champion and, and they get paid, you know, like the beauty queen will receive 10,000 ringgit of scholarship, 5,000 of cash, sponsor this, sponsor that. It's like a beauty queen, beauty contest. So if you go to YouTube, Google, you just say Harvest Festival, you, you can see that. It's a very it's big thing. Yeah, Everything is happening oh, at once. Yeah. The RTM are involved, the Astro are involved. Um, TV Tiga is involved. Everything is, everybody's involved in the month of May. You have a look at it. It's a big oh, thing. Okay. It's a very, very Looking. big. Yeah. It's a very big. So that's the the main, the main attraction of a harvest festival. They celebrate kampung level, district level, and finally state level. And the government is allocating them one or two million just to do that. Very great. It's very great. All right. And the wow. purpose. Okay, Miss Cook. The real purpose is to give thanksgiving to God for that wonderful annual harvest that they receive. All right. Today, in the new generation, we are not talking about uh, 50 years ago uh, in 1960s where that was my time. You know, I was born in the 60s, right? Uh, there is no more rice field in Sabah. I think. Only, only less than one percent. Every every rice field is is filled with soil, and they build they build houses and so on. So they don't really really plant rice now. But symbolically, I mean symbolically, they still celebrate rice harvest festival anyway. It's like Ooh. it's part of the culture. It's part of the community already. Yeah, it's part of the culture. Every year they must celebrate it. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. One million eh, for two days. <laughs> it's a big so, thing, eh? It's a big thing. It's a public holiday. It's gazetted by the government of, of, of Sabah. And in, in Sarawak, of course, they, they also have the Harvest Festival. They call it Gawai. I think you've heard it. Gawai. Yeah, it's a Harvest Festival. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's the same. But but in Sabah, we don't call it Gawai. We call it uh, Tadau Kaamatan in, in Kadazan language. Tadau Kaamatan? Uh, Kaamatan. Tadau is the day. Kaamatan is the harvest. The day of the harvest. Tadau Kaamatan. Tadau Kaamatan. Uh, or Pesta Menuai in, in Malaysia language. Pesta yeah, that. Menuai or Harvest yeah. Festival. Yeah. <laughs> so is there any like smaller festivals that is celebrated in maybe your tribe? Outside is more like um, a family gathering kind of things. Okay, we, we do have, you know, family gathering. In my case, the Wong Lung clan, we have about 150 people gather every year just to, to meet up. And sometimes we do it because we are Christian and celebrate Christmas. Okay, that is a modern, modern, you know. And then some of our Chinese, Chinese um, cousin and niece celebrate Chinese New Year. 
I know, cause uh, I don't, I don't need to tell you about Chinese New Year because you, you know what do you do in Chinese yeah. New Year? Oh, I'm pao, I'm pao. You have know, to play the dragon <laughs> dance or whatever. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. that is, uh, you have to understand that Kadazan, modern Kadazan now, is uh, not pure Kadazan. They they mix, they intermarriage with. It's already mixed. The Indian, the Malay, the Chinese, like us, and so culture is still culture. And then, um, like I told you, the previous student, that uh, uh, some hundred years ago, we were under the British, the Englishman uh, colony. We were under the colony of Britain. So the culture of the British, the family and the lifestyle of the British is still in our blood. So we speak English, we, we, we educate ourselves in English. So the kind of family gathering and so on is like English style, you know, we, we, we do that gathering that is a small small I gathering see. and then um, of course a gathering like um, uh, the firstborn child you know so they gather uh, the family and they yes. have some celebration and they have some culture they, they want to give to the gods the firstborn and the culture can of we get, get into that the baby naming is it a baby naming yes baby naming correct so what exactly happens in a baby naming? Baby naming is like ritual. Okay, the the elders. Okay, the elders or they have the kadazan. Those who are not Christian, right? Uh, we call them uh, the priestess, priestess, because it's a woman, priestess. woman priest, woman priest. Uh, they come and then uh, they do the mantra and speak so many things to the God and so on, right? And then they will just offer this child by way of bathing them bathing them and they speak something to it like favor you will grow you will get married you will be delivered from sickness and they will cut the short hair here you know as a sign that this is the old one we leave it now you grow child and they speak so many things so many poem you know art artistic poem to speak it's like is a word of blessing in other words speak word of blessing like yam chao like the chinese you know like good luck or this thing yeah yeah something like it's the same thing and then uh, for the future of for the, the baby future, the baby they celebrate and uh, the parents or the uncle or the niece will give gifts you know it can be a, a, a any any gift it can not only money but other gifts for the child okay that is food yeah is food it? It, it, it's quite a good celebration or it's quite a good celebration. Yeah. Mm. Ah, a reason for everyone to get there, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so we know that in the past, the Nazans lived in long houses. Right? Uh, no. Uh, no? No. The Dusun. Uh, the Dusun. Oh, the, sorry, my bad. The Murut tribe. And, and, and the Rumus, these three tribe, the Dusuns, which live in the hill part, the Muruts also in the hill part, and the Rumus. The Rumus is somewhere in the province of Kudat. And if you go to Kudat and look at the Rumus, some are still the long. You can still see the longhouse there. And I think but the Muruts. There's no one living there. Yeah, and the Muruts as if you go to Tenom and Keningau town uh, that the interior area of that area they still long house okay but the Kadazan uh, they are not hilly people they stay by the side of the river by the riverside the Kadazan the Kadazan people so they are the first one who get in contact with the seamen you know seamen mean the British who travel by ship the, the the sultan yeah the first one in contact with them in contact with them so uh they stay by the riverside so they don't have a long house by the way and then when the chinese came to sabah to build up shops chinese shops in the plain area it become like a, a colony of chinese uh, so the kadazan came there and intermarried and mixed with them and the chinese don't live in the chinese our ancestors Chinese don't live in a long house, right? <laughs> so, oh, so it's the people on the hills. Yeah, 
So the Chinese build the house and the Kadazan saw the, the, the pattern, the way the Chinese do. So they follow the Chinese and they don't build long house. They build like a Chinese house. Ah, I see. I remember my grandfather, my grandmother, when I go to their house, I see a lot of Chinese style house. Chinese style house. So the Kadazan... So would you say like mm. Chinese heavily influence the Kadazan style? Yes, exactly. Because the Kadazan is the first tribe to in to get in touch with the foreigners, the British, the Chinese, the Malay. So it's not just the Chinese, right? Yeah. All the all the visitors that come. Yeah. Where, whereas the Muruts, the Dusun, and the Rumus are in the hilly part. You know, it's very far from the sea. It's isolated. Mm. So you can imagine it, it influence the culture, the British influence them, the Chinese influence them. So slowly they began to, to follow the pattern, the way they dress and the way they build their house. So mm. when I grew up, when I was born in 1965, I live in a single story house, wooden house or bamboo house. There is no long house. No. Uh, <laughs> so. Mm. Mm. All the cultures and let's say all the food is also a little Chinese infused. Chinese right? infused, exactly. Chinese infused. So the Kadazan type mm -hmm. is more open to changes. Yes, they are. They are very, very, very open to changes. That is why uh, compared to the hillside. Uh, compared to the hillside, that is why the Kadazan embraced them. Some of them got married to a Matsale, married to a Chinese and they mix and then the culture is like mixture of Chinese and Kadazan culture and so <laughs> that is how see, they have been modernized in other words modernized by the foreigners so, so if we you, have the mm. coastal Kadazan mm -hmm. and the Dusun mm -hmm. central Dusun mm -hmm. what is the difference would you say the difference of what different of the whole their, their lifestyle okay. their culture okay i don't want to talk about now right now is modern you cannot yes, everything standardized means the dusun are very modern the murut are modern the kadazan are modern everybody is modern modern mean you can see the kadazan studying in your university or even in the city they they have been influenced by such style but when you talk about 1980s, right, 1970s, okay, then you can see the different, different. Your question was, what is the difference between Dusun and Kadazan? Am I right? That's the question, right? Yeah. Okay. You can, you can, you can really notice the physical, I mean, the pure blood Kadazan and the pure blood Dusun you can really distinguish them the dusun okay number one of course what you said the language is different um especially the murut the murut, the murut. i cannot even understand any single word that they speak to me <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. very different like it's oh yes it's very very different means i cannot even understand a single language single word that they speak the oh. murut from the, the the interior part from from that side okay uh when so i know they are murut i know they are murut you see from the language you can identify they are murut but i know the i know the the lingo i know the way when they speak murut i know Okay. So you don't know what they are speaking. But I don't know what they're speaking. Unless I have to learn, you know. I have to learn like on soy rondom, pabukat, pabukat, kau kai kai, something like this. Okay, a simple, simple one I learned because they speak to me. You know, how hmm. to say, how to say, how to say, uh, uh, nihao in murut. So they say, kau pivosian, something like this. <laughs> you know, then I learn. But if they never speak, I mean, if they speak deeper murut, I cannot understand. I cannot even understand a single language. That what makes that particular tribe uh, different. Different, all right. Of course, the physical appearance is not the same. Okay, the Kadazan are uh, a bit whiter, 
plain, you know, I'm talking about a pure blood Kadazan, okay, no, not mixed Chinese like us, like me, yeah. I look like Chinese because, <laughs> but I'm talking about pure Kadazan, they are white, they are white people, they're just plain and white, all right, the Muruts are not white, they are a bit darker a little bit. Ham skin? Yeah. They, and their clothing? And their clothing, when you talk about 1970s, okay, don't, don't talk about now, 1970s, they use a tree, a kind of a tree, kulit, kulit kayu, you know, a kind of a things. I don't know for mm. which tree is that, but they use that like to, to wear clothes. Oh, the, the surface of the wood. Yeah, yeah, correct. That, that's the murut is. And then um, they have a kind of a, a pen, short pen kind of thing, very long. And they, they just wrap it up. You are talking about 1960s, 1970s. Now you cannot the see real... that. Yeah. But now you cannot see that, of course. They, they, were, they have their own traditional uh, custom and, and the way they dress. Okay. The Dusun, which is mostly Dusun in, if you heard about uh, um, a town called Keningau, Ranau, the Mount Kinabalu. The Ranau, high, yeah. Mount Kinabalu, you know, the, the tallest mountain in Asia, Mount Kinabalu. Uh, under the Mount Kinabalu is is an area called uh, Ranau, Ranau and Tambunan. Okay, these are the place where dusuns are located. Okay, dusun are very very short. They are white, but their language is more on heavy R, the R language of the dusun. Kadazan is more on Z, you know, but we can communicate. We can understand each other, but the slang, like um, I don't know how to say, the Hokkien is talking to the to the Cantonese, something like this. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. We cannot understand each other. If it's pure, we cannot understand. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. But like, like the Dusun and Kadazan, they can still understand a little bit. So they are more tightly together. Yeah, a little bit, but the the way the Dusun pronounce the word is more on R. R, you know, a lot of R. Oh. R, okay. the alphabet. The Kadazan use a lot of Z. Z. It's more it, like Kukustan. You can imagine Kadazan, you know, Zan, Kadazan, Z-A-N, you know, Kadazan, you know, uh -huh. a lot of Z. Izo. Oh, oh, oh. Izo. Izyao. So it's a word. Is the word about the same, or is uh, it definitely different? About seventy percent similar. Oh, it's like say Bahasa Melayu and Bahasa Indonesia. Yeah, something like this. Can correct, correct. Yeah, Bahasa and Melayu. The slang Melayu. is a bit different, but, but the word, some words are the same. Somewhat are the same. I mean, it has the same meaning, but the way to pronounce it not the same. The dusun have more r. Alphabet of R, even though we quote the same, we quote the same, the same name or the same uh, word, but the way the Dusun and Kadazan pronounce is totally different. It's like Bahasa Malaysia and Bahasa Indonesia, but yeah. we talk to the same subject, but the slang of Malaysia and Indonesia is not the same. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Some words can correct change the meaning. Correct. But like I said, we only understand about 70% of the Dusun language. So, mm -hmm. let's say if someone wants to learn the language, mm -hmm. is there like a standard syllabus? Ah, uh, yes, because um, uh, the state of government initiative was they, they teach in the school, primary school, standard school, and even high school. Uh, uh, in, under the subject of, of, of language, you know, you have an option to study um, English, Chinese, or option to study uh, foreign language. So, Kadazan language and Dusun was one of those options. So, if you, oh, if you yeah. go to a university like uh, University Sabah, University Malaysia Sabah, you know, Sabah University, mm -hmm. they have the subject of Kadazan and Dusun. 
so because I would imagine it will go to waste if the language is dying slowly you know yeah no no they maintain it they, they, they teach now in the university like an option nice. you, know? or you, you can study French or you want to study English or you want to study Kadazan something like this so it's up to the student so they have books even the Dusun have books syllabus module they have the Kadazan books that you can read and they have Kadazan lecturer and Dusun lecturer Oh, it's good to know that the yeah. culture is still passed so on. Yeah, so the Ministry of Education in Sabah have implemented that that, that uh, language study. If you are interested. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Right. So, I was thinking about family concepts. Mm -hmm. Family concept in Kadazan. Yeah. When you talk about concept, elaborate me more. What do you mean by concept? Family concept. Yeah, family concept. Let's say hmm. in the role of members within the family, mm -hmm. who is in charge? Ah, is it, okay, 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 okay. Or is it even? Okay, okay, okay. I understand. I understand. Um, generally, I just put in generally among the Dusun and the Kadazan and the Murut and the Rungus. These are the four big tribe and the Kadazan is the, the biggest by the way but uh, the family concept of the Dusun, the Rungus, the Murut and the Kadazan. Okay? Uh, there is no, uh, I should say there is no uh, status discrimination. You know, you are a woman and the man is discriminating. No, no, no. Everybody have your role. Okay, but of course, in the family, the man is the head. Or the husband must be the head. So the final authority, okay, the final authority and final decision must come from the man or the council of men. They have a council. They there's, call a, it, there's a council of men. Yeah, they, they call it council of elders or the ketua kampung or the chief head, you know. So it can be the chief head of the village and a council of men and then the husband, right? So the husband is the head of the family, all right? And the, the chief, representative of the family. Yeah, and the, the, the head of the village is, is a man. The head of the oh. village is a man with a, a council of men to decide the to decide whatever happened in the village so it's head by the man okay so i hope you, you but there's no discrimination la. there's no discrimination when you are a family man you have a wife right then the, the wife is the head of the kitchen something like this <laughs> the wife is the chef of the kitchen so the man yeah. cannot disturb them in the kitchen. If you go to the kitchen, then you have to respect the wife because the wife is the one who is cooking for you, cleaning for you. The wife is just assisting the husband. But when you talk about heavy, heavy things and decision to marry, for example, my daughter want to get married or my, my son want to get married, then the final decision is the man, but he still will counsel the wife. All right, so that's the concept. But uh -huh. you have a role. I mean, the concept is is muhiba concept. It's like gotong royong concept. The wife have his own role as a housewife. Everybody has their own role. Yeah, uh, 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 looking after the children, raising up the children, uh, teaching the children about whatever culture and custom it is. And then a man have his own role also as a hunter, as a fisherman, protector of the house. Uh, looking for food and go as a carpenter or whatsoever and then at the end of the day they still gather together as a family unit all right i see i see you have a guitar back there uh, yeah I'm, right? a, I'm a singer i'm a guitarist i love to sing it's my passion <laughs> <laughs> so uh i wanted to ask about the traditional instruments are you familiar with the traditional instruments okay the famous traditional instrument is gong, G O N G. Gong. You know the one that you beat. Yeah. Because without the gong, you cannot dance the sumazao dance. Impossible. 
Yes. Suma Zaudan. You know Suma Zaudan. Kada kada Suma Zaudan. Without a gong, without an instrument of a gong, then there is no music. Because at that time there is no guitar. Guitar was introduced by the English people. But before guitar come, the 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 only instrument that they have is number one the gong. Gong, you know. It's like the tempo of the whole dance. Yeah, the gong. So uh, there are six gong. Okay, big. Then number two gong, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Six men are hitting the gong, and there's another type of um, made of skin drum, like a drum, like a drum made of animal skin, and they uh-huh. hit it, boom, 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 like a Chinese, you know, drum, tok, 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 tang, tok, 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 you know, like the drum. <laughs> so is there a name for the drum? Um. Oh, sorry, I, I almost forgot on that. Long time I didn't see that. Almost forty years I did not see. It. <laughs> also, it's a little died down already. Mm, but it's gong number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, and then we have a, a smaller gong, like ten of those small, smaller gong. Okay, I can name the gong as kulin tangan. It's a small, small gong, about ten, about twelve of them. Apart from the six gong, right? There is another about ten or twelve smaller gong. Small one, tung ting tung ting tung ting tung ting tung like like you know the Chinese tung 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 na. It's a yeah, smaller yeah. gong, small gong, small like this, and they call it kulintangan. K K U L I N tangan, you know hand tangan bahasa Melayu kulintangan. <laughs> so that's the name of the instrument. So in oh, every okay. village. Listen, Mr. Ku. Every village, there must be a gong, and they they play the gong when somebody died. A special kind of of gong beat, special for someone who died. All right. Then they beat the gong with a special way when people want to get married. They have a special kind of beat. You know, right? And then when is a warrior dance? Warrior dance in in 1976. They have a Kadazan warrior who came from war and victorious, and they welcome them to the village because this warrior is carrying five heads on the back. He manages to chop the head of the enemy, so they have a special gong for him to welcome him. You know, dung dung. <laughs> So uh, to celebrate the correct, victory, the victory. So the same well. gong, the same gong, but different beat, three type of beat. When somebody died, they beat the gong. Is a the gong for the dead. So in the village, right? Even though you are very far away, in the moment you hear somebody beat that particular tune of the gong, everybody knows somebody died. Oh, oh. Yes. Okay. Oh, it is like a uh, announcement to an- tell. Exactly, announce community. The moment you hear that type of of sound, they say, "Oh, somebody died. Somebody died." Okay, so because there's no mobile phone at that time, right? There's no internet. So how to shout to the hill when they are far? So they beat the gong. If a special tune, then everybody, all the village will know that somebody died, and they will just rush. To the house and go to the house and say who died, who died, you oh, know who died, you oh, know something like this. Oh, so, so it's a special instrument. Mm. Go. So as a kadazan, mm-hmm. we have pantang larang, right? All right. So is there any kadazan specific pantang larang that you live? Uh, yes, uh, in the in the seventies, in the sixties, but now we we become a Christian, right? We be, we we embrace the Chinese way. We embrace the British lifestyle. So there is no more strict pantang larang. Okay, but if you talk about 1960s, then there are many many pantang larang. You know, like if you want to go to the house or somebody, then you must bring something. It can be salt or it can be. Uh, Uh, a rice, a small kind of rice, 
and you must wash your feet if you don't wash your feet uh, some bad luck will come to you something like this <laughs> you know pantang larang you know but i know what you mean pantang larang huh? yeah yeah and then um, when you sleep you know when you sleep your head must sleep in the wall okay your your head must as face the wall face the wall you know but if you are dead then the head must be turned around <laughs> in the dead man because oh. if you don't follow that they they some 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 bad luck or something will happen to you the pantang larang is like that hey don't sleep like this okay you must sleep this way your head <laughs> must be here something like it is a is it's like a pantang larang for 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 the people We are talking about 1960s and 70s. Okay, now it's like yeah. how Chinese sleep. That is how we sleep. <laughs> Even nowadays, I'm not around. Yeah, to scare the people. But so yeah, but but sometimes Chinese also have pantang larang. So some of us follow the pantang larang and so on. And Christian, of course, is different. Okay, but if you talk about 1960s, we have we have a pantang larang. Yeah. Mm. So. Do you have any traditional games? All right. Again, I have to bring you back to the to the history. Okay, but now no more. Okay, it doesn't exist <laughs> anymore now. Now we have. Well, no one plays it. Now we have football, Manchester United, blah blah blah, <laughs> the game. Okay, and and and, and 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 video games. You know, the Kazakh children are playing video games. But yeah. if we are back to the old way, 1970s. There are lots and lots of simple traditional games. Okay. One example is the kataput. You know, elastic. You you. Kataput. Kataput. You you elastic the thing. Yeah. In the harvest festival, this is one of the competition. The game. Ah. Uh, to play to compete in the game. Yeah. To hit. To hit very sharp, if you are sharp shooter, you hit something and you get paid two hundred ringgit something in the first prize or five hundred ringgit first prize. If you are uh-huh. very you good in hitting the thing, but it is actually one of our weapon, you know, to 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 for survival. Yeah, survival to hit the birds or to hit the squirrel to kill. You know, I like is a weapon. Is a weapon for us. But then it become a game. Because your question is, what is your no, okay? It's, it becomes yeah. a game when when there is a harvest festival. They have a competition, you know, to hit the tin or the bottles very far, and you have a prize. It becomes a competition. It's like it's like now like archery they used to use in the war, but now in Olympics. Correct, exactly, exactly. This is one of that game, and then uh, in 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 Sabah, a lot of. In the seventy, there are a lot of buffaloes. You know, buffalo water buffaloes. Yes. So they use it. Buffalo is is useful for the farmers, the Kadazan farmers. But then, during the harvest festival, they will have a game called buffalo racing. <laughs> so I heard the <laughs> buffalo being really holy, right? Ah. Uh, No, 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 no. It oh, is. It is the. It's the Indian treat the calf very holy, lembu, right? Very holy, right? But the buffalo is uh, a friends of the farmers. They use the buffalo before the tractor came, the machine came. Everything they use buffalo to ride to bring the rice from the rice field to the house. Everything is using buffaloes. So, it, but it's not to be worshipped. It's just, it's just the best friend of the farmer in Buffalo. Yeah, mm-hmm. the I usage. Something about the Manukaya Kalabau. Manukaya, spell it for me. Do M O N U N G. M O N U N G. N G K. Manukaya. V A. Wow, you are talking. Kalabau. Oh, you are talking a very deep, uh, Kadazan, old Kadazan language, which even me, so I couldn't understand. <laughs> what does it? Uh, can you read? What does it explain? What is so it? So it is talking about uh, the 
rich family of Karazan Muslim people, they would sacrifice a cow, mm -hmm. uh, a buffalo. Okay, that is mostly done by the Dusuns. Okay, when uh, because the Dusuns they stay in the mountain of Kinabalu, right? Many of them thought that when somebody died, right, the soul of that man will go to the mountain of Kinabalu and stay there. Okay, so when they pray and when they worship the mountain gods, so call it, they sacrifice the, the, the animals. And one of that animals is of course the Karabao. The, the water, uh, water buffalo, they call it, water buffalo. Because buffalo is very, very, very popular in Sabah in the 60s and 70s. If you want to get married, if you want to marry somebody, there must be uh, one of the dowry is you must have a water buffalo to, be give, to give, at least two or three. If you don't have a buffalo, you cannot get married. <laughs> oh, uh, that is like how, uh, how sacred. That is how sacred it is. You know, when I want to marry a Kadazan or even a Dusun woman, right? You must have at least minimum two buffalo to give. If you don't have a buffalo, you are not rich. It's a symbol <laughs> of, of richness. Mm. Oh, you cannot wow. get married. Okay. You cannot get married. So I, I don't know. Maybe that is what you call Mahungkai or, or something like they treat the buffalo very, very high, you know. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a sign that you are rich. If you don't have a buffalo, then you are a poor. Something the like that. The parents won't be impressed. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, uh, mm. I'll open the yeah. question to the floor. Uh, last question, if but not least. Answer. Okay, last question, last answer, but not least. Uh, we eat buffalo in the marriage ceremony of a Kadazan in the 70s in the 60s it is a most must to slaughter a buffalo to eat that buffalo oh. is the one that was given to the woman the time when he get married when 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 the marriage is they give two buffalo so one buffalo must be slaughtered during the marriage ceremony for everybody to eat so we eat buffalo meat that is the purpose for them to give buffalo if you don't have buffalo you cannot get married until like this okay because one of it is it needs to be eaten <laughs> for the ceremony yeah i have eaten a buffalo meat it's just like lembu or daging it's, it's very very delicious yeah mm. <laughs> so is there anyone who wants to ask professor any questions Anyone? Um, maybe I can ask a question. Okay. I'm Professor. Is it the Kadazan girls and boys name, the newborn baby? The name is in inspired by the world things like tree and animals. Okay. Again, I have to separate between uh, the modern day Kadazan who are mixed Chinese, the modern day Kadazan who are Christian. So, if you are modern day Kadazan, of course, um, uh, they go to the church or the Chinese head will give them a name. The, pri the privilege goes to the man, the head of the family or the priest. And they will just give a name David or Tony, you know, Joe Low or something. <laughs> they will just give a name. But when you talk about 1960s and 70s, right? Normally, uh, the father will have the privilege to name or the head of the village give the name. And that name, uh, they follow the kind of Kadazan kind of uh, a name. It's a special Kadazan name. I don't know how to tell you, but it is a name being handed down by our ancestors so it is a um it is a ancestor's name i should say all right the name and then sometime 
they f they use the name of the head village that already died, who is very strong and they respect, and they said, oh, okay, I want to name my son as so and so and so and so. So it's not a Christian name, it is not a Chinese name, but it's a name that being used by our ancestors long time ago. All right, but of course the bin bin mean the surname follow the father's side not the mother's side yeah all right thank mm. you ah, sure, sure. Mm. um i have a question okay uh is the language of kadasan people is called central dosu Sen, so what? Sen? Sen, sen, I found, I found the name is Central Dosun. Central Dosun. Is, yeah, is it that? Spell for me, Central. Spell for me, Central. Okay. C, what? C-E-N-T-R-E-L. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I have to correct some history here because I'm a historian. <laughs> I have to correct some history here. Initially, all right initially um the history is this there are about 40 tribes right 40 tribes and the name of the tribe is not dusun okay like the kadazan the the tang language is the tribe of tanga okay okay all right and when you go to ranao there is a tribe there's a tribe when you go to Keningau, there is another tribe. Example, the tribe of Kuijau, okay? Kuijau or Tombonuo tribe, all right? But then, when the British came, when the Sultan came to rule some part of Borneo, they cannot distinguish because of the diversities of 40 tribes. They cannot identify whether they are Rungus, they are the Kuijau, they are the Tanga, they are the Tombenuo tribe. So, the British, when they trade together with the seamen, those who stay in the sea, right? The Bajau, the Iranun, the seaside of Sabah, say, who are these people who, uh, which tribe, who are these people from the hill who came to trade with us? They trade, right? And even the foreigners, cannot distinguish i think the similarity is that the the kuijau people the tombenu the tanga and the murut they cannot distinguish and they simply say it like this or oh, they are the people from the hill okay these are the people from the hill and these are the people from the riverside so in bahasa malaysia especially the muslim right when they speak in the language mereka ini adalah orang-orang dari dusun you know what is the dusun the meaning of bahasa dusun what so, kebun kebun yeah okay when the englishman say hey who are these people and the, the, the malay people the bajau said uh they are orang-orang ini adalah orang-orang datang dari dusun mereka ini orang-orang dari dusun-dusun dari kebun-kebun for example but they call it dari dusun-dusun you know so originally listen eh? dusun is not the name of a tribe it's not <laughs> it's not a name of a tribe originally initially it's not a name of a tribe it is a name given to the english to uh, uh, people by the Malay because the word Dusun is a Malay language. Am I right? Even if you say Ulu Dusun, Dusun Buah Buahan, you know, it's a Malay language. So the the English people, when they, they heard this, that they are the Dusun people, they cannot identify if, how can you identify 40 tribes? Very difficult to name them. The the the, the Kuijau, the Tanga, the from the from Ranau is um, Liwan, Suku Liwan, and Suku this and Suku that. So they just get all it and say they are the Dusun people. 
So, in other words, it is not a name. I repeat, Dusun initially is not a tribe. It's not a name. It is generally given to those who stay in the mountain, those who stay in the kebun. People who stay in the Dusun. So when you say, who are these? Oh, these are the Dusun, the people from Dusun. These are the Dusun people. So when they said to the to the Kadazan in, by the riverside, these are the Dusun. And you know what did the Kadazan say? No, no, we are not from the Dusun. We are not from the mountain. In, a, in other words, we are in the riverside. So don't call us Dusun. <laughs> call us Kadazan. Because the meaning of Kadazan is orang asli. That's the meaning, okay? If you want to know what is the meaning, pro, what is the meaning of Kadazan? Kadazan means orang asli. The people of the land. That's the meaning, translation of Kadazan. The people of the land. And who give them this name? Not the British, not the Muslim, but it was handed down by our ancestors. That it is the name of a tribe, Kadazan. But Dusun was named by the British. Dusun was given the name by the Malay. And it, because they cannot distinguish who are from Ranau, who are from Tenom, who are from Kudat, the Rumus from Kudat, so they just say Dusun. But eventually, when they keep on hearing Dusun, 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 and, and this, this um, Tombonuo tribe, Uh, Tagol tribe, Timogon tribe, Rumus tribe say, okay, what the, what the WFU, okay, we accept, we are Dusun, you know, <laughs> okay, we are Dusun. So eventually, after many, many years, they just receive it and call themselves Dusun. So eventually, it become like, um, okay, how to say Creole language name. You know Creole? They borrow the word Dusun from the Malay and adapt, and adapt it to become a name of, of some sort of ethnic. But if you really ask them, what is your real tribe name? They will not call, they will tell you. They are not Dusun. They will tell you, oh, I am Orang Sungai. Or they will tell you, or oh, I am Murut Tagol. I am the Tagol tribe. Or they will tell you, or oh, I am I am the Timogon tribe. Or I am the Kuijau tribe. Or I am the um, uh, Tambonuo tribe. Have you heard of all these tribe? Different name, you know. <laughs> But they just adapt after almost uh, almost. Almost 50, 60, 70 years. They said, okay, we just take it. Since the Matsale are calling us the Dusun, the Muslim Malay calling us, okay, we are the Dusun, ah, correct? We are the Dusun. So it become like a Dusun, you know. But when you come to Pinampang, Pinampang, listen, Pinampang of Apar, they will never, never, never say we are Dusun. No, absolutely no. They will say we are Kadazan. We are Kadazan. But so there is no such thing as Dusun before the British came. There is no tribe that's Dusun. It was the British who gave that name. Because the, Just the British interpreted yeah. as Dusun. Men from the Dusun. That's all. Mm. They are from the Dusun. So there's no such thing as Dusun language. Every language is before, from the tribe. Uh, yeah. But then, after like, you know, like 50 years, 60 years, this name is become so popular politicalized by the Dusun, uh, the, the Dusun leader, eventually they just, okay, let's take it as a name. So they use it as, I am Dusun today. That's it. But if you say, you are Dusun, from which tribe of Dusun are you? Aha. And they will tell you, oh, okay, I am, I am the Kuijau tribe. Or I am the Hokkien tribe. I am the Cantonese tribe. But are you Mandarin? Yes, yeah, Mandarin. Yes, Mandarin. But uh, tell me actually, are you Mandarin from which which province? Or oh, I am the Hokkien guy, Teochew guy. You know, you know Chinese. You know, they 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 use Mandarin 
as a Chinese, but if you roll, go into detail, you still have the, the tribal, you know. The same thing. Dusun become like general. But the Kadazan separate themselves. They say, no, no, we are not from Dusun. Hey, come on, Masale. Hello, Masale. We did not stay in the Dusun, man. We stay in the plane, we get married to Chinese, and you still call us Dusun? No, we never stay in the Dusun area, okay? We stay in the river area. So we are Kadazan. Something like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the Kadazan, the name Kadazan comes from the ancestors. Ancestors. The meaning is the people of the land. Or like orang asli ya. Aborigines, you know? You know Aborigines? Yeah, orang... The people that is from the... Yeah. You know like in, in Pahang, in Johor, they are orang asli, right? Yeah. They are the people of the land. They are not... They didn't come from Indonesia or from China or so. They they are just Aborigines there, like Australia mm. also have the Aborigines people, like the Native American, the Indian, the Red Indian are Aborigines. All right, because American came from England, they invade America, right? But there are people who has been there, the orang orang asli, the the people of the land. So the Kadazan is, I don't know, it's just there. <laughs> so actually the whole tribe is called Kadazan I mean we are all whether you are Kuijau you are people of the land whether you are Tambenuo Tagol Rungus you are the people of the you are all the Kadazan initially in the 60s only one name was given Kadazan as a general but then the English people want to make it easy they say Dusun 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 so you can see now we have Kadazan Dusun language. We have the Dusun. They embrace it to become a race. So today you can say, Are you Dusun? Oh, yes, I'm a Dusun. That's it. <laughs> Are you Kadazan? Yes, yeah, I'm Kadazan. Yeah, everything together. Yeah, correct. Mm. To make easier things, to make to things easy. Yeah. Are you Mandarin Chinese? Yeah. Something like this. But you they know. Ask, they were Chew or Hokkien. Yeah. yeah. Actually, you are Hokkien and you are different language we will touch you or something like that. Yeah, the same. Mm. Okay. Mm. So, I hope that we are not taking too much of your time. Oh, sure. So, next <laughs> ne next time I will charge your consultants a lecture of fear. Now it's yeah. free, absolutely free for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So, if there is no other questions, yeah, I think we can and this amazing session. Sure. All right. So again, thank you very much. Oh yeah, sure. For giving us this opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, is it recorded? Thank you. Thank you.